Hi there, my name is Aaron Lanterman, and this is the Lexicon 224 Digital Reverb as seen on the StudioRepair.com website. Many will recognize this iconic remote control, but the actual computation occurs in this chassis. If we take a look inside, there's a whole lot of cards here. There's a card for analog to digital conversion, and a card for digital to analog conversion. And there's four cards that form a custom digital signal processor built out of discrete logic. We have the data memory board, timing and control circuitry, arithmetic and register circuitry, and floating point converter circuitry. Now, for general bookkeeping purposes, there was this single board computer that wasn't designed by Lexicon. It was designed by National mm -hmm. Semiconductor. Single board computers were very common in embedded control applications. And using this was a very smart move on the part of Lexicon. There wasn't any real compelling reason for them to design their own computer board. And importantly for the topic of this video, I don't recall any users of the Lexicon 224 complaining about them using an off-the-shelf OEM board. I was reminded of the Lexicon 224 when I stumbled across this video by Espen Craft titled, My $4,000 Synth is a Freaking Cheap PC? Now, that title is not really representative about what most of this video is about. It's a video about repairing your Profit X, and it's very well put together. So, kudos to Espen for that. And I can't really complain about the clickbait titling. I've indulged in a little bit of it myself. But scrolling through the comments, I'm seeing a lot of misconceptions that I want to address. It's not at all fair to say, quote, Dave phoned this one in because they used an off-the-shelf motherboard. Here you have somebody complaining about substandard consumer-grade components. The correct response to this is given by user 1931. It makes perfect sense to anyone more informed. Even precision test equipment that costs 500k runs their state-of-the-art front end into a shitty Celeron PC running embedded Windows. Why? Because it is more than adequate for the purpose. And here's the main point. Putting something, quote, pro, unquote, in there would just drive the price up and add no value. And user BWGTI follows up by saying, I don't think anybody got rich building the Profit X. Developing their own logic board was likely cost and time prohibitive. And I would add, wouldn't have any advantage. Developing custom software to manage the filters and oscillators and make it all usable and sonically pleasing wasn't something they threw together in an afternoon. Knight Paddle wrote, At this point, I'm more than motivated to build my own 4,000 euro synth out of a MIDI keyboard and ITX motherboard and a minimal install of Debian. Okay, go do that. And design this front panel on all of the associated circuitry to support it with all of these knobs and lights and displays. And design and fabricate this massive surface mount analog board with all of these filter chips. And write all the software that runs on that cheap motherboard. And write all the Verilog for the FPGA that the analog board uses to talk to the motherboard. Yes, the Profit X is expensive. But when you think about how much it must have cost to develop and how you have to spread that cost over the number of units sold, I think this is a reasonable price. Now, you may not be interested in a Profit X at that price. That's fine. The market will sort this out. But I don't think they could have really made this and sold this cheaper at least at the economies of scale that Sequential operates at. Sequential is not engaging in price gouging. Yes, yes, if Behringer ever wanted to clone it, they could make it cheaper, but Behringer is operating at very different economies of scale. User Calvin JJ makes the point that they'd much rather have a bog-standard PC motherboard under the hood to replace when it goes bad than a custom chip processor that will never be made again and is basically irreplaceable. That's a good point. It's nice that you can swap out the motherboard if you need to. Diego Synth writes, They bought an ASRock cheap motherboard and slapped it as is in there. Didn't even bother to have a custom one without the connectors or anything. Look, it would have cost more to have a custom one without the connectors. So it made total sense to just buy the one with the connectors and not use those connectors. And probably if you're doing some diagnosis on it, it may be helpful to have those connectors. Now, there is a good point here. Using something like a full Linux kernel means that you are booting into an operating system and that's going to take some time. 
if you had something running more bare metal on a microcontroller, it could boot up faster. So that is a good point. As an aside, the Korg Kronos also basically just has a PC motherboard inside, as did the Hartman Neuron. You are basically paying for this really cool interface and all of the R&D that went into the synthesis architecture. It turns out that there are some Korg synthesizers that basically have Raspberry Pi compute modules inside, and some people were really bothered by that, to which I would have two responses. One is, did you like the way it sounded? If you like the way it sounded, why do you care what's inside the box? Second, the Raspberry Pi compute modules are basically just breakout boards for the Broadcom ARM chips. So why would you want Korg not to use it if that extra work would increase the price of the synth for no reason? The Synclavier region also has a Linux compute module of some sort inside, but I don't know which one. If you do know, please leave a comment below because I'm curious. Now, it does seem like the Prophet X is buggy and failure prone, and I'm not excusing that. Sequential should wear the cone of shame for that. Maybe they should have chosen a different motherboard and or a different power supply, or maybe there's an issue with heat that they didn't deal with well. But there's nothing inherently wrong with the idea of putting a PC motherboard in a synth.